Well, they're beautiful, certainly. I think the colors are, um, the, the saturation of the hues is really gorgeous. And, and they achieve what um, stained glass artists always want, which is as light's coming in, the light sort of glitters on the floor and glitters like gemstones on the walls. Well, I think it gives us a vision of beauty, a beauty that we can't see anywhere else, and especially when the light shines through and uh, you have the jewel look. You can't get it anywhere except from stained glass windows. I think if you go to Methodist churches and Episcopal churches in small towns throughout throughout the country, but especially in the Midwest, you find a lot of a lot of stained glass. Certainly, and the Episcopal church here has stained glass windows that are also quite nice, um, but they're not on the scale that the ones at the Methodist church are, and and there aren't as many of them. Certainly, so this is extraordinary in a lot of ways, simply for the the size and and the number of windows. Each window has a story, has a scripture that it, that it is from, and it tells us as we look at it, that story, and we can envision it in all of its beauty. The Methodist Church has these pretty amazing group of commissions that came from the Willett Stained Glass Studio. And there are places like the National Cathedral in Washington, D.C., West Point, of course. And for the West Point Commission, for example, Mr. Willett had gone up against people like Louis Comfort Tiffany and won that commission. But he also was an innovator and interested in designing glass windows that um, certainly were had some fidelity to the medieval windows. But he was also interested in pushing that medium to a new level. And so he did a lot of shadow sort of shape um, highlights and shadows on the figures. Um, so you, you make the window and then you go back in and you paint over to add some dimension. And that's not something that medieval artisans would have done. The original stained glass artists in the Middle Ages, when they were first thinking about um, putting those kinds of windows into cathedrals, their whole idea was to draw the eye upward, and that's why lots of stained glass windows have that pointed top, the, what we call the pointed Gothic arch, is because it, it literally is like an arrow pulling your eye up through the wall to the, to the heavens. But they also wanted to bring in more light, and particularly stained glass, the light from the stained glass. So they would have colors glittering on the floor as the sun was coming in. And their idea was if you could bring in the light, you were essentially bringing in the heavens. And if you think about stained glass windows, typically the colors are blues and reds and yellows. And those are colors that we often associate with the heavens. And so it was much more about bringing the light in and give you this sense of otherworldliness, a sense of the heavens, um, a kind of ethereal sense. And that has changed, I think, a little bit as we've gotten into the modern era where that's still part of the function. Now you have images of saints or, or other people who maybe aren't saints, like Gandhi, um, who are simply examples of how you wanna live your life. One of the nice things about stained glass in, in the modern era is that the windows have moved down on the walls so that they are closer to the viewer. And in a medieval context, they would have been very far away um, and therefore not meant as um, a kind of didactic um, work of art, but simply as a way to show symbols, um, large scale images, iconography that people would recognize. They weren't meant to be read. Um, there's a common misconception, I think, that medieval stained glass were, medieval stained glass was the, the book for the illiterate, um, but you couldn't see them. They were very, very far away, sometimes two stories higher than you or more, and it would have been impossible to see those images. But here, um, that's, that's not the case because these are churches that are smaller in scale, and so they've moved those windows down so that you're, you may be sitting next to it. You can turn your head and the window is right there so you can read the text very easily. We feel not only the reflection of the windows and the stories, but, but we feel the heritage that has been passed down to us and that we hope to pass on to the next generation and so on. So many of the young people that maybe have been in the church or their families have been here or grandparents are here have heard the story of the stained glass and they come back to see those because the stained glass windows 
speak to your heart. It's unusual to have windows on that scale and that many of them. I think if you go to a place like the National Cathedral in Washington, D.C., um, it's what you have in the stained glass windows here is somewhat similar. As you gaze at those windows, then you certainly see the men and women also in those windows that have lived out their faith and have lived out that Bible story. And I don't think that you can look at the windows without being filled with awe.